Hi guys. Um, so the theme of today is getting there, but originally uh, the theme was journeys, and I'm really glad that that got changed because when the theme was journeys, I figured I really only had one choice, and that was to come up here and sing "Don't Stop Believing" by Journey. But uh, I'm not as good as Catherine, so instead, there's only really one idea that I feel qualified to present, and it is this: that grit is the best way to get there. And I know it sounds simple, but I want to explain this idea through the cycling journey that I went on not so long ago. And I get that that's not everybody's cup of tea. So I hope that these ideas apply to any type of personal journey, be it like a career one, an entrepreneurial one, an educational one, any type of personal journey that may seem intimidating at the start. <coughs> so <coughs> uh, towards the end of 2012, I was burnt out, kind of like a little bit unhappy living and working in Manchester as a video producer. And life at that time was very much about kind of like living for the weekend, and it wasn't a super healthy lifestyle. Um, but I was kind of drawn to go on this uh, big trip because growing up in the Lake District uh, in England, I was like spent a lot of time in the mountains and on hills and climbing and biking and stuff. But all that stuff that was super important to me had kind of fallen by the wayside. So uh, I went into work one day and quit, and it was it was scary. But and I wasn't anybody who does something similar is scared about uh, wasted time and walking away and what people would think. Uh, but actually, I think fear is, uh, you can learn a lot from fear because yes, like fear sometimes tells us what we shouldn't do, but more often than not, fear is a really good indicator about what we should do. So every day spent daydreaming, looking out this window in the studio, I was like dreaming about this kind of big trip and I wanted to go and do something that would act as a refresh and hopefully teach me a little bit about uh, life along the way. So there was a used bike on eBay, and I guess like not other, no other big people buy used bikes on eBay because I was the only bidder, and I got this bike for like 150 quid. And went, uh, oh, by the way, you know they say uh, you get what you pay for. It's totally, totally true. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I set out to do this thing, and I went to New York, and then cycled uh, down the coast to Florida, across the country to California, up the coast to Alaska, and then back across Canada, finishing in New York again. And uh, it took just over a year. Um, and along the way, I had this vague plan about trying to meet as many people as possible and talking to them about their lifestyle choices and seeing if I could kind of pick up wisdom from them uh, about how to live going forward. And uh, there were some amazing days, and there were thrilling days, and there were really tedious and boring days. And there were many, many, many days spent being terrified about the prospect of being eaten by a bear and just wondering whether the whole thing was a totally idiotic idea. <laughs> but I learned, uh, I spent a lot of time with like a really cool variety of people as well, from like seaplane pilots to singing cowgirls, uh, Hollywood directors to tech entrepreneurs. And I learned a lot during those times too. But more often than not, I was uh, riding my bike in between towns and living out of a tent every day. <laughs> uh, and I guess that probably might not sound very appealing. But um, I learned a lot during those times too. And kind of like retrospect is funny like that the stuff that uh, might not be enjoyable at the time becomes like really fond memories after a while. Uh, so where am I? Um, so I met all these people and uh, what did I do? <laughs> uh, and then, so and there's really uh, three main kind of things that I picked up along the way. There was many, but these are the three things that I think apply to regular life as well. Uh, one is in the Texas desert, I learned that we should trust ourselves. So uh, I'd been riding for a couple of months and self-set, like nomadic loneliness had started to kick in. It was a little bit weird, but up ahead there was another cyclist and that was really, really weird because he was going in the same direction as me. And in some people's opinions, people who knew more and had experience, Riding from east to west across the country was the wrong way to go and would end in failure because of the wind. Uh, so eventually I met this guy and he was Ho Young from South Korea. And we rode together for a couple of weeks and became really good friends. Uh, but on one of these days when the wind was blasting in our faces and sand was getting thrown into every like pore in our skin, we pulled over into a desert farm shack. And he told me that um, 
he was an engineer in the US, uh, and he'd been there for nearly a year. A year. But he, uh, before he went home, he wanted to go and do this uh, cross-country cycle ride, uh, which he'd long dreamed about. And then he wanted to take his bicycle home with him and pass it down to his future children with a message that said, don't worry what other people think if you are drawn to something that they view as unusual. Because I like, quizzed him about this, and he said what he was doing taking time to go on his own journey, had been looked down upon by a lot of people as like not fitting their norm of expectations. Uh, and I thought that actually this way of thinking is widespread, where we look down at other people's paths in life as too unusual and too weird. That mindset is total crap. And we should ignore this if like a journey, whatever you take that to mean, is exactly what we should do. Oftentimes, getting going involves shunning the naysayers. <laughs> we have to trust ourselves and trust that we're here for reasons that other people might find hard to understand. So I learned about not putting things off in the Arizona desert. It was late at night, and there was an impending snowstorm up ahead. And uh, as I was approaching this snowstorm, there was a village gas station. And I pulled over to, uh, to like, layer up, put waterproofs and gloves on and stuff. And, uh, as the gas station was closing, a guy walked out, and we got talking. And he told me that it hadn't snowed there for six years. Uh, and it, so it was really unusual. And apparently, the snow up ahead had closed the road. Uh, and then as, as I was kind of layering up and about to get going into this snowstorm, he came over, and he shook my hand tightly and gripped my glove and stared like intensely into my eyes and then looked out into the now snowy, snowy night, and he said, the only way you'll survive out there, man, is to follow the way of the Apaches. And I had zero idea what he was talking about, because with a raincoat on, following the way of the Apaches seemed a little bit dramatic. <laughs> but I set out into, this, uh, into the snowstorm, and it did feel a little bit spooky for a second. But actually, it was during that moment that I realized, like, right here, right now, is exactly where I'm supposed to be. And if I'd have put this off and waited for the right time, it would never have happened. Like being here in this snowstorm and what it represents is awesome. I think oftentimes the time never becomes right and the cards never line up. And the only way they do become the right time is if we make it a priority and make it a surety and don't put off what calls out to us for too long. So I learned about elephants every single day, which you might think is a bit weird. But, uh, yeah, every single day I learned about elephants. Every time the, uh, I was riding my prone to breaking eBay bicycle was a lesson in elephants. In Alaska, there was elephants. In uh, the Canadian prairies, there was elephants. <laughs> there wasn't any elephants. What I'm getting at is the meaning behind, oh, actually, that would be kind of cool, though, like riding along and, hey, Nelly. Uh, but what, what I'm getting at is the meaning behind the phrase, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? I think the big, meaningful, and personal journeys are never quick, and that's a good thing. They take time, they take grit, they take energy, they take persistence, and because of that, because of going all in, they often become something bigger and with more meaning than we ever imagined prior to setting up. So this word journey, you might think is like an adventure thing, but I don't think it is. I think if your elephant might be like an adventurous thing, but it doesn't have to mean that at all. Just as much that phrase applies to anything that seems as intimidating as one person eating an entire elephant does. And that's a lot. Um, <laughs> so when we make the decision to go on our journey, it's, it's one pedal stroke after the next. And it's, uh, it's metaphorical, fleshy, little meaty elephant bites and mile after mile that add up to us getting there. <laughs> if I learned one thing in those 12 months, uh, it's this, that grit is key. And when things don't work out and when everything breaks and you really want to give up and go home and stuff, if we keep going, it's generally going to get better. So ultimately, we might all be faced with a choice, and that is the apparently secure and normal option or a uh, personal journey, whatever you take that to mean, that might seem a little bit daunting. And if we can't get this latter choice out of our head, and if this personal journey 
is exactly what keeps us up at night with excitement, and this personal journey is what we know will make us grow, then I would argue that perhaps we owe it to ourselves to choose the journey and to use grit when we're on it. Thank you very much. Thanks.